Good morning, fourth grade. Hopefully everything works out well today. Sorry that yesterday we did not have a math lesson. We are going to go over yesterday's concept today and then talk about what we're learning in today's lesson as well. So to start off math class today, we are going over our concept from lesson 139. First of all, we talked about measuring liquids before. We've used English units of measure. We have measured liquids with a pint and a quart. Remember, a pint is two cups, one quart is four cups. Um, now today we're going to talk about measuring liquids in the metric system. Pints and quarts are the English system, so we're going to talk about the metric system. The basic unit of capacity in the metric system is the liter. A liter is slightly more than a quart. If you ever see the big jugs of root beer or ginger ale, that is two liters. So half of that is one liter. A liter is a little more than a quart. So when we're talking about measuring liquids, measuring capacity, remember we're talking about how much something holds when we're talking about capacity. Obviously, um, when we're measuring liquids, we're going to have to measure it um, with capacity, with talking about how much something can hold. It's different than when we measure length, we're measuring how long something is. Capacity is how much something contains. So a basic unit of capacity in the metric system is the liter, which is a little more than a quart. We have worked with our metric prefixes a lot. Hopefully you know most of these. The prefixes themselves are the first part of all of these words, hecto, milo, kilo, deca, desa, and centa. Hopefully you remember what most of those mean. And we're just going to go over these metric units of capacity and the metric prefixes. So if we would have a hectoliter, what does hecto mean? Hecto, if you remember, means 100. So a hectoliter is 100 liters. Milla, what does milla mean? Milla means 1,000th. So a milliliter is 1,000th of a liter. It means if you take one liter and you divide it into 1,000 parts and you choose one, that is a milliliter. What about a kiloliter? How much is, what does kilo mean? What does kilo stand for? That is 1,000. So a kiloliter is 1,000 liters. Deca means 10. A decaliter is 10 liters. Deca means one-tenth. So a deciliter is one-tenth of a liter. Again, if you take a liter, divide it into 10 parts and choose one, that is a deciliter. Centa means one hundredth. So a centiliter is one hundredth of a liter. So again, our metric prefixes mean the same thing. Just instead of measuring length, like a decameter, it's 10 meters. A decimeter is one tenth of a meter. But instead of measuring length, we're measuring capacity. So we're talking about liters, but we're using the same prefixes. Hopefully you worked that carefully in your lesson yesterday. If you have any more further questions on that, just let me know. Let's dig right into our next lesson. Turn to lesson 140. That is our lesson for today. Talking about measuring temperature. So the scientific instrument used to measure temperature is the thermometer. And we all know that. Fairly obvious. Some thermometers have mercury in them that has been colored red. So when that mercury gets warmer, it expands and rises in the thermometer. And when it cools, it contracts and falls. So that's how some thermometers show temperature. Now, on a thermometer, we have two scales. We have a Fahrenheit scale and a Celsius scale. And our unit that we use to show, to measure temperature, is degrees. This is our symbol for degrees. Now, when we're talking about temperature, um, here are a few 
temperatures we want to remember. Since we have the Fahrenheit and the Celsius scale, both are listed here. So the freezing point of water, Fahrenheit, is 32 degrees. But now if we're using the Celsius scale, the freezing point of water is zero degrees. Okay, so they're both based off of a different amount, different temperature. So if we say zero degrees Celsius um, and 32 degrees Fahrenheit, they're actually the same thing. The boiling point of water Fahrenheit is 212 degrees. The boiling point of water Celsius is 100 degrees. Normal body temperature Fahrenheit is 98.6 degrees and normal body temperature Celsius is 37 degrees. We most times use the Fahrenheit scale, but other places use the Celsius scale more often. So we want to know these temperatures fairly well in both scales. So if we think about the Fahrenheit temperature and the Celsius temperature um, being based off of a different number, um, let's just go over some temperatures to see if we can figure out if they would actually be hot temperatures or cool temperatures. So remember, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, 0 degrees Celsius is the same thing. So a higher number Fahrenheit is going to be the same as a lower number Celsius. So think about it. If it would be 37 degrees Fahrenheit, is that hot or cold? And we're used to working with the Fahrenheit scale, so we should know the answer to that. 37 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that is cold. It'd be cold if it's 37 degrees. Now what about 35 degrees Celsius? Would that be hot or would that be cold? Now that would be hot. See, the normal body temperature Celsius is 37. If it's 35 degrees Celsius outside, it would be hot. What about 92 degrees Fahrenheit? Hot, of course. What about 29 degrees Celsius? Is that hot or cold? Now that's hot as well. What about 29 degrees Fahrenheit? That is cold. Uh, what about zero degrees Celsius? That is cold as well. Okay, so when we're talking about Fahrenheit, talking about Celsius, um, we have to remember they are scales that are different from each other. We're used to working with the Fahrenheit scale, but if we work with the Celsius scale, a lower number um, that we're used to it being a cold temperature in the Fahrenheit scale is actually a hot temperature in the Celsius scale. For example, if it's 37 degrees Celsius outside, it's hot. If it's 37 degrees Fahrenheit, it's cold. Work these carefully in your lesson today. Let me know if you have any questions and I will see you in language class.